Another prospect sit down. We have star wide receiver from Arizona, one of those Wildcats, Jacob Cowan, joining us on the show. We're going to talk about his game, his speed, his versatility, and everything he brings to the table. We're going to talk about all that and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout and a senior draft analyst. And thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. And you know I got to kick this intro to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez, you can find and follow him on X at the Talent Code. Can you talk to him, baby. What's up, locked on family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 national champ with those LSU Tigers, man. He'll bring you championship level contests around the NFL draft 24 7, 365. Man, listen, I want to say shout out to everyday. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. We are your go to source, man, for the best NFL draft content, whether that's draft strategies, man, whether that's breaking down team needs, or whether that's what DP player interviews. And I say that because the player interview series is continued and this is a playmaker edition dp like you went and got us a playmaker you went and got the playmaker we have arizona star wide receiver jacob cowan coming on the show so yes man this is a guy that i firmly believe will be a top 100 pick and he's one of the most explosive playmakers so definitely stay tuned for this interview but dp before we get started with this interview man why don't you hit him with our title sponsor Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And guys, without further ado, let's get to our sit down, our interview with star wide receiver for those airs on the Wildcats, Jacob Cowan. All right, family. As we told you, we have a special guest on the show, Arizona Wildcat star wide receiver Jacob Cowan. Jacob, man, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing good. Doing oh. good, man. First of all, thank you for taking the time out to come on to the show with us. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, No problem. No problem. Jacob, I want to get this thing started. I always like starting, man, at the baseline, at the foundation. And for you, man, that was Maricopa High School, right? From Maricopa to UTEP and then UTEP to University of Arizona. So can you just talk to us a little bit about that process, right, of being an under-recruited guy coming out of high school and then going to UTEP and then a UTEP to Arizona transition, um, you know, before you went to the NFL? Yep. So Maricopa High School, uh, a lot of people don't know, like it's a very, very small town. Uh, not a lot of, you know, people come out of there when it comes to sports or anything like that. So, um, you know, going throughout my high school career over at Maricopa, um, I was never really recruited heavy from um, really like any power five school or anything like that. It was a lot of D2 um, interest, a couple of D2 offers. Um, and then senior year, about two days before National Signing Day, that's um, when UTEP came along. Um, right before that, uh, that was my first um, uh, Division One offer. So um, I just took it, uh, ran with it. Um, you know, I told myself, you just go out there and prove to everyone uh, what kind of player that you are. Uh, don't let that, you know, get down on you or anything like that. So um, go over to UTEP. Um, first year didn't didn't uh, go so well. Second year, that's when COVID happened. So we only had, what, seven games that year. Um, and then third year going into it, um, that's when I had um, a pretty good, a successful season. I had over 1,300 yards over there, seven touchdowns. Um, and also, like, my first year of college, that's when I also became a father myself. And he was back in the Arizona um, area uh, still. So that's what really uh, made me ultimately want to get into the transfer portal my last season at UTEP, um, trying to come back to Arizona was my main goal. Um, so when I got the phone call from um, the University of Arizona, um, had a great conversation with uh, Coach Fish and the coaching staff over there. So um, everything that I wanted – to accomplish um, within my career, my collegiate career, um, they were going to help me get to it and also beyond that uh, with NFL too. So that's what ultimately wanted me to come back to Arizona and choose um, Arizona, and that's where I ended up, and that's where I finished. Man, Jacob, is both me and Keith are both fathers, right? For mm -hmm. you, man, what has fatherhood kind of taught you about yourself that's kind of actually helped you prepare going into the NFL? Um, I would say definitely like being just responsible. Um 
accountable accountable to um understanding that uh, you have a lot that's like you know looking up to you um to be a good role model to be a good example and um also just being patient as well too that's uh, a big thing that i've learned being a father is being patient um understanding um you know you know kids are uh, they they grow up and um you got to have a good example and um you know good understanding of what um life should be about um and have good morals and everything like that so uh, that's the number one thing that I've definitely um, I've noticed with me being a young dad and, um, you know, and going into football as, as well. It's really you see a lot of correlation there um, when it comes to it. Yep. No, nah, man, they say football players are creatures of habit, right? Doing the same thing every single day. And that repetition, repetition and routine is, is very vital. But you kind of switch it up a little bit, right? Going from UTEP to Arizona. I want to yeah. talk about some of the things that Arizona taught you and prepared you for as you head to the NFL, taking a step up from the group of five level to the power five level, but also just some of the coaches that were there, right? And some of the things that they have taught you and being in that environment. Yeah, I would say the number one thing that I've learned uh, being in Arizona was um, how to be a professional, how to carry, carry your business. Um, you know, looking at Coach Fish's background, he spent um, some years in the NFL. Um, our running backs coach, Scotty Graham, same thing, uh, years in the NFL, Brendan Carroll, um, you know, dad head coach of the Seahawks. So they all been around football for many, many years. So they, they know what it takes to be successful. They know what it takes to be um, a high caliber player. Um, so um, that's what they strive to do with each and every one of um, us players at Arizona was to show us the, the guidelines of what it takes to be a professional when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to taking care of your body in the treatment room. Um, what are you like the little things you do um, outside of practice, outside of you know, the lifting sessions, all the extra work that goes into it um, that can separate yourself from being a good player to a great player and um, how to get your name out there as well, too. It's all that little stuff that um, no one knows that you're doing is what always comes to light at the end of it. So that's what they really preached and honed in on um, uh, with a lot of us players. And that's something I just picked up and I um, added it to my game, added it to my life. And um, I'm here now. So, Jacob, being a five foot eight receiver, typically people say, man, Smaller receiver in a game full of trees, right? But for you, your game is nuanced. You have speed, but you know how to tempo and use patience and everything with your route running, man. Kind of talk to us where that comes from and how you use your height as an advantage for yourself. Yeah. Um, I mean, me growing up, I watched a lot of Tyler Lockett, um, you know, very, very similar in stature. So he knows how to use his has uh, his abilities to to his strengths and, um, you know, how the ability how to get open against, you know, length or uh, DBs, uh, you know, people think that, oh, obviously he's going to get jammed up, whatever, whatever, but he has, you know, a move for every single thing that's being thrown at him. So that's something I really liked and I admired growing up, um, watching him do that and always having an answer to every problem. So um, that's how I go about my business, um, try to study as much as I can in that film room of um, other DBs, how I can have an answer to every single problem thrown my way and um, just using my strengths to my advantage and perfecting those crafts to where um, it's going to be hard. Uh, for other DBs to try and stop me at the end of the day. Nah, for sure. I like that, man. You're talking about being a 5A wide receiver, right? So th there's a certain mentality that comes with that, right? Beating on those six-foot guys and outshining them, right? What Where does your mentality come from, man? Stepping on a football field and saying, you know what? I'm going to flat out dominate everybody. It doesn't matter if they're six foot, six, six. It doesn't matter. I'm going at after, after everybody. Yeah, um, I would say one thing that really, really, like, got me to where I'm at is um, a lot of uh, doubt, um, you know, me being a smaller guy. Um, I just didn't really have the understanding of, you know, of coaches that I had um, growing up that kind of would always, um, you know, throw shade at me saying, you know, I'm too young, I'm too fragile, I'm not going to make it. And, uh, you know, that kind of really hit me hard. So I really wanted to prove all the, all the haters, all the doubters wrong that um, I could do anything I put my mind to. And that's something I put my mind into. Then I grew um, you know, a huge love and passion for the game as well, too, that has let me continue on to, um, you know, my career in football. So um, I would say those two things really would, is, is the fire to everything that I go about my business. Yep. Listen, you, you said your career. I'm going to hop in there real quick. One more DP. You said your career at Arizona, man. Listen, you had a pretty it was a pretty good season, right? You put every you put yourself on the map, man, made a lot of plays. Is there one play that stood out to where you sat there and you said, you know what? I think I'm that guy. Uh, ooh, there's a lot. If I'm being honest, uh, 
I would say definitely the last game, uh, the Alamo Bowl against Oklahoma, uh, my last touchdown, my last uh, catch of my collegiate career. Um, we were tied up 24-24. Yep. So I caught, caught it, uh, ran a 42-yard touchdown, uh, put my team up by one touchdown. Um, defense went out there, had a great stop, scored again, up by two touchdowns, won the game. So I would say that's one of my definitely, like, proudest moments to where I'm like, okay, like, like yeah, like I am that guy, like putting my team up, <laughs> my last catch in my co collegiate career. So I would say definitely that one. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one. 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk and including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Goal for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood Goal, Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA, available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker-dealer. No, I, I love that. And that was a big game for you. You know, 152 yards, two touchdowns, seven receptions. Kind of That kind of kick-started you into this draft cycle, man. So kind of tell us, how's your draft, your draft season been, right, from the senior bowl to training to the combine? How's, it, how's everything going for you? Oh, it's going good. Um, I would say huge credit to the guys here at Exos, um, you know, from the nutrition standpoint, from the training aspect of it to uh, the support behind it, everything. I mean, those people are phenomenal. Um, I know a lot of people know about the Exos here in Phoenix. So uh, I would say number one, that for sure. And then um, um, everything else has been good. Um, having, you know, uh, Gold's feet on social media, Tevin Allen coming out to help me um, sharpen up my tools uh, when it comes to being a, a technician. Um, and then you know, just going out there and playing my game, um, you know, try not to do too much, just stay true to myself. And um, uh, I think I've had a good, um, you know, week at the Senior Bowl, I had a good week with the Combine, uh, talking to teams, um, showing my game, what I can display. Um, so I think overall my whole experience has been pretty good, and I've been just really embracing everything. Um, you know, I only get this opportunity one time in your life, so I've been having real fun with it, honestly. Yeah, man, I'm I'm looking at some numbers, man, and 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 I see a four three eight forty yard dash, right, and and that's fast, man. But you know what I like, you know, because you're sitting at home and we're watching it on TV, and they talk about some of those guys with nerves, right? Because they tell you, right, that's the most important four to five seconds in your entire life. So can you just give me DP and the listeners just what was your thought processes, man, as you were walking up to that line? to know that, you know what, there are millions of dollars just with me running this 40-yard dash. What, what were the nerves? What were some of the thought processes going into that? Uh, I'm going to be completely honest. That first one, uh, the first run I took, uh, that was like the jitter run. Like, all the nerves is coming to you, that first one. Like, like all these people watching you, know people watching you. Um, so that, I would say that first one is just all trying to get the jitters out, uh, out of your system. But then the second one coming around, um, I knew what I did wrong, too, in my start, my first one. So I went back, um, I, I got my start where I wanted it to be. And then after that, just um, letting your mind just be free. Uh, that's what I did. Uh, I just closed my eyes, took a couple deep breaths, uh, told myself what I want to go out there and accomplish, go out there and do it right now. And um, I went out there. I was like nothing else was really going through my mind instead of just running and as fast as I can and fixing my start. So that's what played into that 438, just kind of letting my mind be free and not let it race or anything like that and just go out there and just perform at that point.
Nah, I like that, man. I thought that was good insight, too, because we always wonder, right, what's exactly yeah. the mental? We can't read you guys' minds, so we have no idea what's going on. But listen, man, the NFL Combine, it is, first of all, it's a star-studded event, right, with the best draft prospects that they have. But then also, man, I love how they surround you guys with former NFL players, right? And, you know, they're able to talk to you, have conversations. Was there one conversation or just meeting one person, even if it wasn't an in-depth conversation on where you met that guy, you met that person, it was like, man, that's an NFL legend or that was somebody that I always looked up to. So I would like to know if, if you was able to come across that guy at the NFL Combine. Uh, I would say uh, Chris Carter. Um, that's one guy that he was, um, you know, with a specific group that I was in. He was, like, really, like, our our mentor, like, kind of, if we had any kind of questions or any kind of doubts about anything that we might have, uh, that we could contact him, get his insight on it, because, you know, he's an NFL legend. So a lot of yep. people know he's been in it for a while. So. Um, you know, I, uh, I met him during a meeting, um, my third day there, um, but it wasn't, you know, it was just me like introducing myself, who I was. And then at the combine, he was, you know, all, uh, everywhere we went with the drills, uh, the 40, the routes, the, uh, the shuttles, he was always like always around. So, um, you know, he would just tell me like certain things that he saw that I could maybe get better in my game. And then, um, he also just kind of told me that. Um, you know, I, I ran a good 40, but like, don't let that go to your head. Like now you got to go out there and perform. Now you got to go out there right. and show what else you could do. So, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, coming from an NFL legend like that, I mean, that really like meant something to me. So I took it to heart and I went there. I just did my thing and I balled. Love to hear that, man. I, I want to give you opportunity to scout yourselves. You scout Jacob Cowing. What's your biggest strength and what's that one area of your game that you're working to improve on? Um, I'll say my biggest strength is, uh, I would say speed, um, playmaking ability. Um, I mean, I can I could do something when the ball's in my hand. Um, you know, down the field, deep threat, um, sh uh, short screens, uh, bubbles. Um, you know, I could do something with the ball in my hands. Uh, something I need to get better. At, I'd say definitely blocking me, being a, a smaller guy uh, in the run game, um, being able to uh, stick on blocks a little bit longer, opening up lanes for the running backs and other uh, receivers who have the ball in the hand as well too. I want I wanted to give you an opportunity real quick, Keith. I want to give you opportunity, man. You playing at you know at Arizona. You got another receiver that's going to be on the radar next year. I want yeah. to give you opportunity to talk about your guy. Um, yeah. You know, number five. You know, the guy that's on. Like, a lot of people start starting to tweet about him for twenty twenty five. Kind of talk about who he is, type of teammate, just what his game is. Is he up next? Are hey, you talking about uh, T Mac or Dorian Singer? Yeah, T Mac. T Mac. Yeah, T Mac. He's a. He's a freak athlete, man. Oh my gosh, this, the things that I've seen in practice, I'm like, oh, like someone that big really shouldn't be moving like that or be doing what you're doing. But uh, you know, he's a he's another great guy. Um, you know, he's a great personality. Um, he likes to have fun with it. Um, he likes to be around the guys. You know, working hard, displaying um, his talents as well. Um, he comes into the building with a great mindset every day. Um, knows how to put the work in in the weight room. Uh, he knows how to spend time extra um, outside of practice. Um, how to get better in certain areas. And then um, I think definitely he's going to have another breakout year if he continues to, um, you know, step up the, 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 his grounds a little bit more every single year. And I think he's doing that, um, you know, with him staying at Arizona and um, him being with his quarterback that he's been with for, for a long, long time. So just um, strengthening their connection too. So I think that's just going to be um, all in all, just a great thing to watch this upcoming season that he's going to definitely perform. One last question real quick, Keith. So you say he's a freak athlete. Who's winning? Who's winning the foot race? You or him? Me for sure, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> guaranteed. There, there, there was no hesitation in that. That was a without a, a doubt. Keith. That, that was yeah. a guarantee, man. Listen, I, I want to wrap this this interview up. I always like asking the guys, man. This is my favorite question of entire interview. Is give me some NFL comps, man. Paint the picture for our listeners. Who is Jacob? Who do you feel like Jacob Cowing is or will be as far as the NFL comp? Um, I would say uh, a, a big time playmaker, someone that knows what to do when the ball's in their hands, how to contribute to the team. And uh, from a receiver standpoint and also from a special team standpoint, um, I like punt return. I love punt return, actually. Uh, so I definitely want to get out there uh, and display that I can take a couple back to the to the house um, and then just going out there and just continue doing what I what I know I can do, um, the kind of player that I am. And, um, you know, just playmaking ability, speed, um, creating separation from guys, and also being a good route technician as well and continue to improve on that as well. 
Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have gentlemen, we have Mr. Jacob Cowan. I'm a simply wide receiver, punt returner, kick returner, the playmaker, Mr. 438 himself, man, running away from def defensive backs in college and in the NFL. I want to say just simply say, man, thank you for coming on to the Locked On NFL Draft podcast and talking with our everydayers. Thank you. Oh, of course. I appreciate you guys for having me. You shouldn't have to worry when it comes down to buying the next tickets for your big event. But if you wait till the last minute, you will because you're trying to compete with other buyers and find the best deal. Let me introduce you to Game Time. They are the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. What else do they offer? What are those other benefits of the Game Time app, DP? Let me tell you guys. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. The tickets are easy to find and buy. And this is the best part, my favorite part. They show the views from all the seats in the venue. So before you purchase your ticket, you know what vantage point you're going to have. Guys, this Sunday, the number one seat in the Western Conference, the Minnesota Timberwolves, travel to play the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, you know, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and you can get tickets for as cheap as $100 on the Game Time app. So all you need to do is download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. You just heard the man himself, our sit down with wide receiver out of Arizona, Jacob Cowing. Man, quick takeaway, Keith. Uh, soft spoken, but confident. This young man is confident yeah. as ever. And you love to see that, man. You love to see a young man believing in himself and what he can bring to a team and, and, and the ability or the the willingness to embrace different roles and wear different hats for his team like he's a punt return slot receiver receiver handoffs whatever it was we saw it on tape he did anything and everything arizona and when he was at utep they asked him to do and he did it man you just love to see that type of confidence shine from a player yeah and, and it appears as much of a playmaker that he was at arizona right he's still humble and and, and I, I don't i don't get that diva type of mentality right and, and those teams that you know are young right and still trying to build rosters and, and trying to build any type of culture he seems like a immediately plug and play right he seems like a um a, a selfless guy in the sense of the fact that he's not selfish right and he's going to step in there he's going to give it his all he's going to make plays he has humble beginners right this is a guy i believe out of high school he had no stars and like he said he got called up the last two three days to utep right which is still not the biggest school and then you know right. played there a couple of years and then on his way to arizona with the child so with the and and you know just him speaking about his his son um you know just kind of let me know also that he pretty mature guy right he doesn't seem like a guy that's going to give you a lot of problems and um i i i like him man and, and these are the type of interviews that that raise draft stock for me uh because i buy into the professionalism no 100 man he, he's he's being i think you know he kind of talked about like just being a dad as we know it grounded him like he's grounded right he's 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 got his roots he's got his foot his feet planted and he's got something to battle for every single day that he yep. wakes up. And he, every time he's training, every time he's getting uh, ready for practice, whatever, he's got something, uh, in, in that external motivation, not just like he talked about proving those people, like you said, zero stars, nobody wanted them. People told me it was too small and he couldn't do this. He couldn't do that. And he said, man, I wanted to prove those people wrong. But that's one part of motivation. But having his son, having that child is that extra part and i know for me i wake up every day to what we do i would, my son is always on my mind of why I'm, I'm trying to be better every day and you could tell that is the same thing for him man. and i'm just excited to see where he lands in the draft and, and guys listen if your team drafts jacob cowan you're getting the big time playmaker all right you can mm -hmm. he's he led at utep he led them in receiving three straight years before transferring to Arizona, yeah, where he had over a thousand yards in 2022 and he had almost 900 yards this year like he talked about his teammate t mac who will be on the radar. I promise you, Summer Scouting, we're going to have some good conversation about that young man because he's big, he's athletic, and he can move. He stepped into that wide receiver one role, but you could tell, as Keith said, he's humble. He didn't – you could tell it was a good – there was good vibrations there, good energy, even towards his teammate, T-Mac, man. Um, and I'm calling him T-Mac, too, because I can't pronounce his actual name. I got to try <laughs> I got to try it on my own first, right? You know, rehearse this thing before I unveil it on the pod, but – Man, really enjoyed talking to him and um, 
definitely looking forward to him, guys. If he comes to your team, be happy about it. Keep remember, I think what did Jim Nagy compare him to? Did what he compare him to Deshaun? He said yeah, that Deshaun he's got that Jackson. type of speed. And we yep. kind of saw that at the senior. I, 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 I can see and at the combine. Yeah, I can see that type of play, like as far as vertical threat, right? That type of speed, but body type, I really liked the Tyler Lockett yes. type of comparison, right? I thought like as a wide receiver, I can see a lot of nuance and detail in his game. Um, and, and Tyler Lockett has been a guy that make plays, right? Whether you're a NFC West guy, whether you're a C Seattle Seahawks fan, whether you're a fantasy football player, right? I mean, you know, you know that Tyler Lockett makes plays. Um, and he's a consistent player, and I and I really like that comp. But DP that wraps up another episode of the locked on nfl draft podcast interview edition man player interview edition listen you guys said listen we want some playmakers dp went and got a playmaker man he said i'm gonna bring you guys jacob cowing so this was the playmaker edition but listen man i am keith sanchez you can find me on x at the talent code that right there that is my co-host co-host man my guy damian parson you can find him on x at dp underscore nfl and like we always like to say man y'all talk to us because we like to talk back go subscribe and follow for free on youtube wherever you listen to podcasts get the latest episode as soon as it is available thank you for making locked on nfl draft your first listen today and every day shout out for being our every day is on tomorrow's episode it's gonna be my first two round mock draft of the 2024 NFL draft cycle might have some trades might got some movement we're gonna get into all the spicy action from my mock on tomorrow's episode but guys come and join the, could join come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the locked on podcast network your team every day